right this time we'll try to dig deeper into the anatomy uh, of a Sparkle query here I'm using a few slides from uh, a presentation prepared and delivered by uh, Dr. Larissa Soltatova from Brunel University now she's answering my question here that I asked a few videos ago what does Sparkle stand for you know Sparkle obviously is pronounced Sparkle you know she says it's a recursive name so it's an acronym for Sparkle protocol and RDF query language so the S stands for Sparkle and then it's a recursive uh, acronym as you can as you can see um, so Sparkle is usually used for RDF, R RDF resource description framework uh, repositories or you know triple uh, uh, collections or collections of triples as you know SQL or SQL is used for relational databases now um, she's given this ni nice interface here I'm sorry nice uh, structure here or nice diagram I'll give you a few seconds to have a look at it I'm, I'm not going to explain it but this is where Sparkle is placed in, term or in terms of uh, this structure and this is uh, obviously she's taking this from uh, somewhere yes now why we use Sparkle it gives us the ability to pull values from structured data semi structured data from RDF uh, collections and the rest of it and then this t these, t these videos are not about what an RDF is but usually an RDF or uh, any data that's represented in this uh, uh, the idea of triples is a graph yes if you if you look at our sample file from that we took from the book here you can imagine this Richard as a node or a vertex in a graph the phone number is a vertex another vertex and then the home telephone is an edge between the two vertices or, the, or between the two nodes yeah so that's a vertex or a node another node and this is an edge with a label home telephone again the same node now Richard is linked to another node uh, uh, which has the email value with another edge with the label email likewise for Cindy and for Craig who has two emails I hope that makes sense so every collection of triples can be represented as a graph or is actually a graph that's why that's why some people call it RDF graph so RDF graph your RDF data set are exactly the same thing and this is for example for a city called Leipzig or Leipzig I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing it correctly you know that's a node uh, that's probably can be seen as another node you know the longitude is uh, our uh, um, predicate here so that subject predicate object is linking these two uh, together another node there another node there I hope that makes sense in fact this is different uh, to what I explained there these nodes lo look very different so I don't know what exactly is meant by that but obviously that's the subject that's predicate and that's an object and you can see it does actually look like a graph that's what pe people call it a graph anyway I'm not going to delve into uh, more detail about this what I want to explain is actually uh, probably in the next slide or the one after now this is taken from the book that we are using yep uh, wh what it says is that from a graph that we have from an RDF graph or from collection of triples uh, using sparkle a sparkle query rather using a sparkle query we can have a subgraph yeah, or a subset of that collection of triples so we narrow down the collection from the whole graph from the whole data set we just want a subset from that they said we just do some some records from the whole uh, triples yes so uh, for a sparkle query uh, the where clause is uh, is what specifies you know which data to pull out is this is the where clause it's the where clause we put where we put our conditions uh, to pull out the data that we actually want yes and the select does the actual picking of the data now if you see here this is what we, I want to explain the anatomy of our, spa, of our sparkle query I like that name actually the anatomy of a sparkle query yes uh, so we have one two three four five sections or five parts the first one is where we declare our prefixes remember uh, or shortcuts and this is optional I remember that for keywords which are uh, in, in sparkle I'm sorry sparkle keywords we use capital case yes so the optional part is uh, where we defined I'm sorry we define our prefixes this is at the top of the query and then we use the select statement or the select clause where we actually uh, specify what exactly we want to uh, select as we said here selection does the picking 
picture with data to the display and then we can specify our data set by using the from keyword as we mentioned before uh, in our previous videos uh, when we were explaining the R using the arc and the Jenna for Seiki server to run uh, Sparkle queries and when we actually uh, you uh, explained um, querying publicly available uh, sources now this is also optional but our key our main keyword here after the select is actually the where close yeah and uh, notice that it's actually in capital case so it's a reserved keyword or a keyword in, in Sparkle and then with a curly bracket and inside that we put our conditions what exactly we want or the conditions that we want our data to meet yes we want the data to satisfy uh, and meet so we can display the results and then these are also optional modifiers where we can for example order the data by a certain uh, uh, by a certain uh, 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 result of, of, of field or condition we can limit the number of uh, of, re of, of records of the results of which we actually saw that in the video where we queried the uh, uh, DBpedia uh, triple uh, uh, triple store or triple or co collection of triples yes I hope that makes sense this is the anatomy of a sparkle query this is what it looks like we have prefixes which are optional select statement we can use the from keyword if we want to specify data set where the data set is which is also optional and then the main one is keyword you know after select the main one is the is the where keyword with the curly brackets put our conditions in there and this we can use some modifiers uh, which are optional another look at our query that we used in the previous videos and we can see it's exactly the same thing as you can see here this is our prefix and then our select statement select what Craig's email for example and then we use the keyword where so we can specify our conditions inside the inside there and then if for example we're expecting uh, a large number of results then we can maybe for example use um, some of these modifiers if you notice here uh, Craig, Craig has two emails so we can limit it for example to one and it'll give us back only one email so we can say for example uh, limit one and it give us the first email yes hope that makes sense uh, other than that thanks for watching and I will see you next time